Hi everyone, today we're going to be building a simple grid based movement system that you can use in your games. We'll start with the simple box that's going to be our cursor with an X and Y scale of 1 and a Z scale of 1.2 so that it protrudes forward from the background. We'll make it movable and visible only. Then we'll add in our second box which we'll be using as the background and that will be 3 units wide by 3 units tall, 3 on the X, 3 on the Y. The Z will stay the same and it will be non-movable. We're going to be using a free slide connector so we can slide this cursor object on both the Y and X axis freely. It'll connect them together like this. And right off the bat, it is in the wrong place, so we'll open up the background object and set the connection points to center center. That's already looking a little better. Now, the way we're going to manage movement is using counters. They're going to make up the X and Y numbers that the grid corresponds to. In this tutorial, I wanted to make a smaller, more manageable grid, so we're going to use 3x3. Three three. We'll add in a counter nodon, and we'll set it to a starting value of 0, center, and a range of negative 1 to 1, so that there's three possible positions, negative 1, 0, and 1. We'll copy that, so now we have two counters that can hold three spaces. One will be for the x-axis and one for the y. If you're familiar with programming, we're almost working with an array here. To move our box around, I decided to use the directional buttons, but you can use anything else. Or if you have a way to use the stick input as a single-use firing mechanism, you can put that in here as well. Now I'm going to set these to right, left, and up, down to correspond to movements on the X and Y axis. Now I'll save you some trouble here. You can go through all of these and set them to on press. Now just make sure you wire these in the right place so that right and up are increasing the counter and left and down are decreasing the counter. Here I'm testing it and figuring out that I did not set it to on press. So now we have a basic working movement grid, and if a visual representation is all you wanted, you could end here. But our bonus objective is going to be to create a marker grid using the marker nodons that works together with our visual grid to give it some functionality. We're going to add a 2D marker display, because that also takes an X and Y axis, similar to our grid. If you plug in the counter directly, you'll notice that it's not working properly because the 2D display marker nodon only has a unit of one to go from left to right or top to bottom. To fix this, we're gonna use a map nodon for each of those inputs. The map will take a range of negative one to one, just like our counter, but it will only output on a range of zero to one. So we're scaling that output down so that our 2D marker nodon can reflect our visual grid. Now, instead of touch sensors attached to the grid in a hacked up kind of way, we can use these bullseye nodons. To test out that it's working properly, I'll add a sound effect. And we'll connect the top, bottom, left, and right to it so that we can hear that sound as we move around the grid. So it's looking like all of them are working except for the right, and I didn't wire it correctly. When you fix that, it's now working perfectly. So 
So now you have both a visual representation of your grid and a more programmatic one that you can use for the functions in your game.